Okay, I can call the meeting to order of the Whaley Select Board of October 14th, 2020. This is a Zoom meeting. Uh, first item on the agenda is uh, approval of the meeting minutes of September 30th. Any comments, discussion? Okay, I make motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion. Second. Okay, a roll call vote. Jonathan? Yeah. Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. <clears throat> okay, Bender and payroll warrants. Uh, you had a chance to look at them uh, online. Any comments? No? Okay. Moving on. Uh, next item is public comments. Uh, any comments from the public that are on today on items that are not on the agenda? Mr. Pate. Okay. I wanna... Brad. Brad. Yes. Don Skorowski. Okay, Don, go ahead. Um, I was, if you recall, I contacted you guys about a month ago about the railroad crossing over here. Yes. And uh, I was wondering what happened. Nobody ever got back to me. Okay, Brian, you know what's going on with that? I know that um, Keith had one meeting with um, the folks from Pan Am, and it was not very successful. And the last thing that I knew was that he was trying to get in touch with somebody from the Mass Dot Rail Division. And I haven't heard if, if he's had any success with that or not. So I can find out and I can, I can send Don an email if you want. Yeah, I would appreciate that. You know, like I said, I didn't hear anything. It's been over a month. Hello? Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, my my name is Gina. Okay, we, 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 Ma'am, we have somebody talking already. Wait, so wait a minute. Hold on, please. Yep. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, so Don, have you seen any activity there by anybody? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, and I, so it isn't getting any better by itself, I guess. Oh uh, no, Fred. I I wish you guys would somebody would go over and sit at the tea guy's place and just listen when the trucks go by. And that lady that was trying to get on is the neighbor. She oh. lived right next door to the tracks. Okay. Well, I, I know going over it with my vehicle, it, it, is, it is rough. I, I don't hear much noise inside, but. Uh. You sit, sit in my yard and wait till a, a trailer goes by or, or a landscaper with a trailer on the back. I mean, it is loud. Okay, we'll uh, look into it further and, and, and do more with, with Keith and, and the railroad to try to get some answers as to what and when, can, when, it, when it can be uh, fixed, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Gina, do you want to say Can I speak? I would okay. love to speak. Can I? Okay, Gina, go ahead. Please, thank you. Um, we have the pleasure, uh, privilege of li living at 109 Christian Lane, which is right on the tracks and right by the crossing. And I sent an email to the town with my concerns uh, towards the end of last week, I believe. And um, I'm definitely, we're a thousand percent on board with this being addressed. Um, prior to the last construction that we had, um, the tracks were way quieter. And it's so loud when vehicles go over and trucks go over at crossing that literally shakes the front of our house. And sometimes you feel like the trucks, the 18 wheelers from Yankee Candle, T guys are coming right into your home. And prior to this reconstruction, it wasn't like that. Um, I've also checked the crossings in South Deerfield and Hadley that are very smooth. And I'm not really sure what happened with this last road construction, but we certainly would like to see it addressed. I mean, this is literally disturbing our lifestyle on a regular basis. Okay, thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you, oh. Fred. Fred, just one follow up. This is uh, Les Hancock. Uh, I've lived here all my life. The last build on that crossing was loud, but not as bad as it is now. And when they were 
the uh, construction crew was here making the new crossing, I talked to the guys involved and asked them if there's something that they couldn't do to make it a little quieter and a little bit more decent for the people that live in the area. He told me that he just got off the phone with his office telling them that they had the wrong material to finish the crossing and that it wasn't going to be done properly. And he told me straight out that they told him, go ahead and use it anyway. So they put the wrong stuff in and that's most likely the reason why we have the issue that we do now. Absolutely. And, and it's, it, all you got to do is, is uh, take a ride down here and sit for about five minutes and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. It's, it's just not right. Okay, Lester, thank, thanks for your comments. Uh, we're going to look into it further. Uh, it's good, good to hear that several of you are, are commenting on it. Uh, that, that helps us and maybe makes hey, more hey, Fred, attention to the, to the issue. So. Fred, I want to jump in, but I think Brian has something to say as well. Yeah, I was wondering if, if, if Les, you remember the name of the company who was, work, who was doing the work. Oh, God, I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, it yeah. was uh, part of the crew from that Trans Am people, you know. Uh, they're the ones that I think did all the work. And uh, I, 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 I should have been a little bit more vigil, but I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we could find out. I was just wondering. But, but he did. He, he said straight out to me, he says, I just called the office, says, hey, we got the wrong material to finish this crossing. They told him, go ahead and use it anyway. They just wanted to finish it. And we're left with what they did. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's not really right. Bad. You know, and all you got to do is take your car, drive across the uh, South Deerfield <coughs> crossing, and then go to Egypt Road, go across that crossing, it's smooth, slick, no noise. Uh, and then you come across this one here, and you'll see the difference is horrendous. And it's not like... Right. You know what? Okay. With all that, all that you had said, you had said. Don't need free veggies anymore. <laughs> Am I correct that this was a federal project, correct? I think it is, yes. So, Brian, I think it might make sense. If, if, if you're not getting any any response from people and, and keep isn't, I, I think it might make sense to have at least um, John Staberski and Jim McGovern's office aware of the, of, of, of the challenge and of, and of what Les reported in terms of the materials that were used. Um, because if it is federal money that was inappropriately used, that may be a, a lever that our congressman can use to get it fixed more rapidly than three select board members and a town administrator from a 1600 person town in Western Massachusetts. Agreed. I think you're hundred percent right. If you go on that Avenue, you should be able to at least have some muscle. Good right. Idea. We should also know who Keith has been talking to uh, at the state. M uh, Mass uh, DOT, has he been talking to somebody there? And I, I don't know for sure, but I guess we could find out as well. And, okay. And Brian, John Staberski the guy, is the guy you would talk to in McGovern's office. Okay. 40 miles an hour. Okay, any other comments from the public on issues that are not on the agenda for this evening? No one else? No. I'd like to just make a quick comment about the speed limit on Christian Lane, just for myself, because um, it's 40 miles an hour, and it's pretty fast for Christian Lane. I thought that this was a residential area, and I was shocked to see the speed limit to where it was as well which doesn't help the case either with the tracks, but it's also unsafe for our neighbors. Plus the cop, the, uh, the new addition of a lot of little kids in the area. It's just, it's just crazy that it should be that fast. And if they're, if it says 40, they're doing 50, 55. It's crazy. Yeah. Maybe, uh, the police could sit at tea guys once in a while too. That would help. Oh, absolutely. Okay, they, they do patrol, but or monitor traffic. I didn't know exactly where. 
on Christian Lane, but we well, could but, make but a, I think I think they've got a point. If 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 Swamp Road is thirty five, Christian Lane and Swamp Road have a, a lot of similarities, and and maybe it should be brought down to thirty five because they are very similar, um, similar roads. Yeah, I agree fully. Hey Brian, Great. and I apologize, Brian. It's not. And, and John Stabersky is going to kill me. It's, it's John Nijelski. Can't spell. I can't spell either one of those. Uh, I'll, send <laughs> I'll send you the contact information. <laughs> <laughs> but I think part of Christian Lane is is thirty five down by the Blue School. Down where? By the down blue by the Blue School. Isn't it thirty five? Well. River Road is through there, but I think Christian, I thought the Christian Lane was- The majority's 40, for Fred, past your house is 40. Right. Yes. Yeah, I don't think there's anything saying 35 anywhere. No, no, no not at all. And what's what's the other side of St uh, State Road? Is that 40 then? No, Jeez, that, that, be thir that might be 35. Going up the hill. That's probably back down to 35. 35. No, 35 going up the hill. Okay. 25 going up to the center of Wheatley. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. And, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Somebody, Appreciate somebody it. Get back to us? Yes, we'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Our agenda. Uh, appointment with Karen Gaston of uh, Diamond Shine to discuss a possible, possible cultivation uh, establishment at 73 State Road. Yes. Okay, Karen? Yes, I had contacted the um, building inspector too. I hadn't heard back from him um, in the town uh, that we went through when we went and got the approval on 85 State Road. And I'm just curious as to if it's a possibility um, <laughs> to think about a 10,000 square foot cultivation right next door to where the dispensary is going to go. This would be south of where the dispensary is? Yes, Post? yes, that's correct. And that's that open, clear open field? Yes, it's right before, um, I, I believe that they're considering it 73 State Road from what I think, but the house is for sale. The house is for sale to the left of that property. The guy that owns the modular homes is right there. I think, but that land is being sold separately. I, I think that's a planning board issue then, rather than us, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would think so too. I haven't gotten, I mean, I called, that's what I thought too. I mean, we would deal with the host community agreement, but. Right, exactly. Just like we did before, right. So I guess I don't understand the question. I, I had asked the question um, to Brian before, and then I got on the agenda for the first selectman meeting, which is where I am now. Um, I know the process because obviously I went through it before, but um, mm -hmm. I was trying to get in touch with the building guy too. He just hasn't responded. Uh, but I figured he was the one to answer it too, whether zoning would be, you know, permittable on the property at 73. I don't think anybody on this this meeting knows the answer to that question. Right. Do we? Uh, maybe uh, if anyone does, Brian might know. Yeah, you're muted. Great job. Um, so yeah, I directed Karen to get it to get in touch with Jim Hawkins about the zoning there. I believe that's a commercial property, so I, I, I it's likely that it that it would be possible there. The reason it would come before this board is that it would require uh, a, an additional host community agreement. The original host community agreement that the board signed um, with Karen was um, for a retail establishment at 85 State Road. So right. this would be for a, a, a um, marijuana cultivation at 73 State Road. So it would require a separate host community agreement. So I think, I think the question was is Really, I think she's looking for feedback as to whether the board would would consider a a new host community agreement at that property. Yes, that that makes sense. I'm sorry. I, I guess I 
have no nothing negative about it to say right now based on what we what you told us i guess once we see more of what you're proposing to do there i guess we'll comment further but okay and i'll just continue to get in touch with um mr hawkins 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 and, i'm sorry yeah and you know and i and i don't know i don't know how to say this but my only concern and i don't know any background i don't know anything and it's not my business but my only concern would be a new host community agreement um but there are some there are some legal issues that that i think should be resolved before we signed a host community agreement just because absolutely you know. absolutely this came up unexpected for me so i agree I, I yeah I just I just wanted you to yeah understand. no no I'm I'm glad you mentioned it in that way um yes absolutely okay, okay. yes sir Joyce do you have any comment on uh, allow uh, another host community agreement um I think that you know thanks for the heads up because um uh, then we can kind of keep our keep tabs on how you're progressing on various things and so it won't come take us by surprise but at this point. I don't see we don't there's no action for us to take at this point just future action if uh things go as you would like them to go no problem and i'll email you separately to give you any information moving forward like i said it was same surprise for me okay right and again i'm not i'm not i'm not taking big placing a value judgment i'm just saying that we don't want to deal with unknowns absolutely no. understood okay great Good, good line of communication. I like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Great. guys. Have a good night. Thank you, thank too. You, too. You too, Karen. Okay. Mo moving on our agenda. Uh, next item is uh, COVID-19 state of emergency uh, directives that we've had. And uh, I guess keep updating. Brian, is there something on here you want to bring up? Um, Not related to the orders or directives, no. Okay. But it's just a continue, it's an item we keep there just in case. Right, okay. Then the um, one item is the status of the CARES Act spending and consider additional expenses. Yes, I'm trying to bring up. Uh, and while Brian's bringing that up, I, I just want to comment that, you know, the town two towns over from us is a is a hot spot right now um and we want to maintain our vigilance in town to do everything we can to keep people safe i don't know what our recent numbers are but um you know a little a little peer pressure to make sure people in town are wearing those masks at all times um be they employees or i don't care who um, I, 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 if, if we want people, things to go back to normal, uh, and we can take this thing off of the select board meeting agenda at some point down the road, um, I, it's just a, it's an opportunity to always say, please stay vigilant and, and, and keep wearing those masks and keep practicing social distancing. Okay. All right. Let me bring this up. So I wanted to talk about um, the two sources of funding that we have to respond to, to COVID-19, special sources of funding, and where we're at in terms of our spending, what we have left, and, and really when we need to spend it by if we're going to spend it. Um, so at the top here, you see this CARES Act. That's the um, 139305000 that we had talked about on multiple occasions. And then the other part of it is FEMA funding, and it's under a disaster declaration. FEMA funding's typically, I mean, the typical disaster that FEMA works with are, are usually natural disasters, and they're of a, of a, of a finite time period. So there, there's some questions that arise um, with some of those, with some eligibility costs um, that we're still trying to figure out. But, the framework that's been set up 
um, by the state is that the CARES Act is supposed to supplement um, the FEMA disaster money. So in most cases for eligible FEMA, FEMA activities, um, FEMA will pay 75% of the eligible expense and there's a 25% local match and we're allowed to pay, we're allowed to use CARES Act funds um, to provide that 25% local match. And that'll make, it'll make sense in a minute while, while I'm talking about that. Um, whoops. So our total expenses to date, um, I've divided these. So the first, the top one, um, 3-1 to 6-30s was an FY20. 7-1 um, to 9-30 is quarter one of FY21. And then the remaining time period that we have left. So all of these funds, all the CARES Act funds need to be spent by the end of December. Um, it, and it's actually a little bit more specific than that. It's the, we need to get the benefit of the expenditure prior to December 30th. Um, which is a little different than spending it. Um, so to date, there's three categories under the CARES Act that are eligible. One is municipal, continuing your municipal services. The other one is expanding the public health mission. And the next one, the last one is services and support to residents. Um, so it's broken down CARES um, by cost that we could charge to the CARES Act, cost that we expect to be reimbursed by FEMA. Um, so to date, we've spent um, $14,905.32. Uh, $14, um, hey, Brian, does that yep. expense include money we, I feel, should reimburse to the town of Deerfield for the senior lunch delivery and pickup prop program that's been done very successfully? Um, they fronted all that money, uh, yeah. but I thought we were going to be reimbursing them for our our share of that. Um, the last I knew that that they were not going to seek reimbursement from us, but if that's changed, then um, I can check with Casey. Per personally, I think yeah. that we can just go ahead and reimburse them. Um, it's cleaner that way. It will allow them to be more flexible on other requests that other entities may be making of them. Um, and, 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 I, and I just feel a lot more comfortable if we pay our bills rather than waiting for someone to invoice us for our bills. Yeah, I, I, could, I can follow up with Casey on that. So the total spent to date is, is like I said, 14905 Of that, uh, you know, just under 9000 of that is CARES Act, and the rest of it is FEMA. Um, so, and actually, it's just looking at total costs. So the, the CARES Act amount is a little bit more than, um, a little bit more than the 125 now that I look at it. So we have a significant amount of money left that we haven't spent. And I guess that's that's sort of the, the point of this conversation. Um, but we also have some um, significant requests that we've also received um, based on some conversations that I had with with uh, Darius. Um, so we, we received requests and I believe the spreadsheets are in your packet, um, totaling almost $58,000. Total for costs at the Whitley Elementary School. Um, and this doesn't include um, the $5,000 that they were looking for um, ultraviolet light um, upgrades to the to the HVAC system at the elementary school. Um, there was a request for Frontier, and there was a total cost, and then it was uh, split based on on the percentage of assessments of the of the assessments between the towns. Um, this $10,000, $11,000, um, $11, those were the tents. Um, that, that cost has actually been incurred, but we haven't been invoiced, we haven't been invoiced for it yet. Um, and I know, Jonathan, we probably want to talk about the, the South County Senior Center tent and heater possibility. Um, 
we, we're trying to figure out what's best for um, ventilation at the, the fire, water, and highway uh, facilities and also at the, at the police station. Um, it, there's been some discussions as to what might be best there. Um, and then the public health needs one is really an estimate. Um, I found out today that, that the Foothills received a separate pot of money. So um, we're not sure that they're actually going to need any additional money at this point. Um, so. Um, I, and I can speak to the, the, um, the, the tent issue um, at the senior center. As we all know, the, the building that the senior center operates within um, is pretty dilapidated. Uh, it's old and it hasn't been maintained very well. It's it just, it's an old building. So the ventilation is very poor. And we all know that with COVID, uh, ventilation inside uh, even with appropriate social distancing and, and, and following other protocols, ventilation is critically important and the building just doesn't have it. Um, so both the Board of Oversight and the Deerfield Board of Health um, are, are very nervous about letting uh, any, any significant number of seniors back into that building uh, simply because of the, of the you know, the, 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 the risk among a very, very vulnerable part of our population. Um, a solution to that, and it's not a 12 month solution, but it is a many, many month solution is to acquire a tent with a heating system. And it has to be an external heating system, obviously, because open flames probably are not a good idea inside a tent. Um, but if we were to purchase a tent, uh, not rent it, but purchase it, it will solve our, it will help solve our immediate problems to let some seniors back to the center doing some socialization, which we all know is important, especially for seniors in, in, in this age. Um, and they're, they're asking for it. Uh, it would allow us to do it not on the most frigid of days, but you know, even on pretty chilly fall days, um, it would help them do some social activities uh, following social distancing guidelines and, and other protocols like mask wearing. Um, and then we would have an asset uh, going forward once, once the pandemic is over. So um, I would, and, and we would, and we would loan this to the, to the senior center um, as needed. Um, I would very much like to advocate that the board support this purchase uh, with the CARES Act dollars. Um, I've looked at the CARES Act budget, not as closely as Brian, but pretty closely. I, I just think that it's, you know, with two and a half months left of CARES Act, and again, as Brian pointed out, we have to see the result. It just can't be an invoice. Um, you know, we're not going to spend that money down, uh, but this is a very creative way to, 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 to really benefit the seniors in, in a way that they don't have right now, because I know I'm not comfortable opening up that building um, to, to seniors right now. This 7,000, that's, is that half the total cost? That's the total cost. So is Deerfield or anybody else paying anything? No, I'm suggesting that I'm suggesting that because we have capacity in our CARES Act budget, I'm suggesting that that we purchase it, and I'm suggesting that we donate the tent and the heating system to to the senior center um, out of the out of generosity and out of the uh, and under the concept of that we're a, a region and we have to help each other out. Okay, uh, has anybody looked at? Improving the the uh, HVAC system to make it uh, more uh, cleaner air, so they can use it inside, and it would be a, a permanent improvement rather than a, a tent for a couple months. They, the the town has done Deerfield has done that extensively. It would be 
significant, significant money going into a building that probably does not have a long shelf life for its current purpose. So it would be throwing good money after bad. Uh, and this is, a, this is a functional option while the Town of Deerfield and the Senior Center Board of Oversight consider next generation options for a new building. But that building, Fred, I would not advocate that, that, that Waitley help, help improve that ventilation system just because it would be, it would, it would be a tremendous amount of money and they're not convinced that it would be effective just because of the of the current state of that building. Okay. Now, what about these uh, portable uh, air filtering systems that, that the town has for? I guess we're using them at town hall and and for the conference room there for voting. Is, is would that help here for inside they, use? And and forgive me, I, I'm I'm not an, an engineer. Um, but we discussed that option, and the 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 building uh, engineers in Deerfield had a very good reason why that would not work, because you would just be recycling the bad air. There's no good there's no good mechanism to force bad air out and bring good air in. And those systems you're talking about, Fred, simply they need that that source of good air for them to work effectively, and it just doesn't work in that building. The building is just in really bad shape. Yeah, I, I think you're right that there it's, it's in bad shape, and that the heating system's not a kind that's amenable to adding a filter very easily. But I disagree about the room. Uh, filtration. Um, they don't rely on an external source of air. They have filters that filter out particles uh, down to the size of the particles of, of a virus. Um, so uh, I think there it, it might be that they're not confident that it would remove enough uh, from the air. It, that there, there might be other reasons for, um, for not wanting to use uh, a room size air filtration system. Uh, but it wouldn't be that you you can't. It's it's not a source of fresh air. Okay. A source of fresh air might be a better way to do it, but I don't think they have a good option for that either. So uh, so so I I I don't know that that's going to be a good track to go down for for any number of reasons. Um, as, as I pointed out to us, I'm not an engineer. Right. Brian was in that meeting. Brian may remember a a a, a better way to to describe why they were hesitant about that. Um, yeah. I don't care as much about why that they were hesitant. It might be, there might just be a, a different good reason why they were hesitant. Okay. Um, but I, I think for, for what we're using them for, I think they're perfectly adequate. We're just using them as a supplement to a, a, a place where there actually is other air circulation. Um, so where was I going with that? Um, that was, um, it, I just, I wonder though, are we gonna get, will we be able to be reimbursed for this because place the order now, we're gonna get them in November. Will we get the benefit of these before December 30th? Ooh, I, I, mean, think, I, mean, I think the benefit is the receipt of the, 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 the piece of equipment or whatever you're buying. Um, mm -hmm. And it would be a benefit ongoing because while oh i don't i don't doubt it's ongoing but i thought that what brian mentioned was that and it's in yellow on the thing he's sharing cares act funds must be expended before december 30th and then he also said and you have to be able to see the benefits before then and is receiving them equivalent to to having the benefit yeah maybe brian knows better i don't think there's a clear answer on that oh okay um, it's been the devoid of guidance <laughs> for much of this process. Yeah. Can you ask that question, Brian, or is that going to be a, yeah. a, a dark hole that no, you never find the end of? <laughs> uh, I've yeah. heard it asked, and I have not heard it answered. I, I think there's not a bright line test. Um, yeah. I, one, okay. of, one of the concerns I have is if, if, if we order something and it's back ordered and we don't get it till February, do we have to start canceling orders because we're not going to? We're not going to get the products. Yeah. A question I need to ask, but 
And then there, I mean, there is also the possibility. I, I'm not going to bet on anything, but if there is a second stimulus package, it's not out of the question that they would extend the deadline to expend these funds beyond December 30th. Um, yeah. So it, it's true. Our government's pretty good on no cost extensions. <laughs> So can I, I mean, I think there are, I, I think these questions are very good questions to ask, but I, and, and, you know, Joyce, obviously what you asked is, is, is mission critical, making sure that we do get reimbursed. Um, and I don't know, Brian, how to do that if you're not going to get an answer, but if Brian were to secure information that we would get reimbursed, are we on board and can we take a vote on purchasing this with CARES Act dollars? Yeah. Could we put um, some other possibilities on this list? Because uh -huh. um, one of the things we only just learned this today, but we, we've got some parts of town that need um, high speed internet. And we learned today that one of the places we thought we might apply for a grant for that will not extend Comcast copper wire or anybody's copper wire for that matter um, unless the town owns the infrastructure and I don't know that that's possible it might might be possible for us to own it but it might take until past December 31st to figure out how to do that and I don't know that Comcast can get the work done before December 31st but if we went to them and said if you get it done by December 31st we can pay for it. If you don't get it done, we can't. We might be able to manage to do that. And we just got the, the number today for the cost of that to get the, um, the three homes on the way far in North Street to get them on uh, the cable will be $20,000. Um, and it's a little bit more than this estimated amount available remaining um, and I don't know if there's some other funding we ought to be seeking for that as well. But this, this, you know, the need for the internet out there is largely because of schooling. It's largely because of remote uh, uh, coursework for the kids who live out there. Um, and uh, you know, uh, for the people, even if they don't have kids in school, having having internet so that you can do things like socialize on Zoom and. The, the lovely experience we're having now here. Um, I, I think that's something we ought to at least consider as a possible CARES Act expenditure if there's room in our CARES Act budget. Uh, it sounds like there might be because not all of the expenses that Brian listed are, are certain, but it would be a significant one. So I don't expect a decision on it tonight necessarily, but I wanted to put it out there as a possibility and um, having not had a lot of time since we learned the information today about other possible sources of funding, um, it probably would be imprudent to try and decide today. But I wanted to put that out there as, as something I think would be a qualified fund and, or qualified use. Well, if, if uh, this shows we only have 13,491 available and with the 10,000 it uh, what else health district gets uh, with that 10,000 be added to the 13, Brian? Yeah. And, and what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to reflect in the, um, in the, in the estimate for the elementary school in and for frontier is that it's likely that some of those expenses that they're asking us, well, I want to hold on. I want to pause for a second. Let me talk about the elementary school for a second. It's likely that some of those costs will be FEMA eligible, so we'll only, we may only be looking at at, at paying you know twenty five percent of the fifty um, fifty eight thousand. Um, okay. So we'll have seventy five percent that that we won't need to spend from CARES, but we won't have a good idea as to what. Um, what FEMA is going to consider eligible or ineligible until we hear back and we submitted our, our first reimbursement request last mm -hmm. week. Um, some of what we're hearing from FEMA is that, is that they're, is that they're not considering um, providing PPE for, well, I'll just say it for, for school as an emergency. 
Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, we don't, I don't think we need to get into argument over that, but, um, so we need to see what, how they're going to treat those, those types of, you know, those types of costs that we submit. Um, it, it, it mm-hmm. came up in a different conversation that, 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 that MEMA and FEMA were not providing PPE, um, to get schools open. Um, they so, assume the 57,000 is not all PPE. I would, it's I'm not, no. Yeah. So, nope. Brian. Yep. You know, risk analysis time. Yeah. <laughs> you got to know. And if, short of knowing, we have to have a pretty good sense of, of, of what your best estimate is in terms of what's going to happen to that 57 and change. Yeah. To, make, to make our other decisions in my book. Right. Um, we'll need to, so this is, so I presented it as worst case, um, worst case, all cares act money is, is spent. Um, for the elementary school tents, are they, does that include heaters as well? No, they didn't, they didn't request heaters. They're, they're kids. They can survive the cold. Okay. Okay. And could you explain that? The ventilation upgrades, the, the two items you got, fire, water, highway, and police, what what specifically are they going to do? Um, so this is, I just saw the proposal the other day. I haven't really studied it too much or or we haven't committed to anything. Um, so the fire, so it would be upgrades for the, the, the meeting room at the, the meeting room of the offices at the fire station. Um, it, it was an upgrade to their, um, so their forced hot air, and it was a type of heat recovery, uh, HRV, heat recovery ventilation um, unit that could be installed and in that it would help exchange fresh air into the building. Um, and it could be installed within the existing system. And then um, for the water department and the highway department, uh, those were more of, of of air purifiers that that we had gotten for the town hall um i think the idea was that one would go into keith's office and the other one would one would be placed in the the water department office that at the pump house um and the other one for, for police is just a placeholder i know jim was looking at what could be done with that building as well um and i i haven't heard back from him as, as to what that would be and I, I'm not really sure that 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 under public health needs that the Foothills Health District will will need the ten thousand. Um, I, I was told that they they just received another uh, fifty thousand um, dollars for for the COVID response, and that fifty thousand dollars also has the same caveat that it needs to be spent be, before December thirtieth, twenty twenty. So they're also looking for ways to looking for ways to spend money that's um, not just waitley obviously that's the entire district yeah. that's the entire district so that so 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 that would pay for that uh, it would pay for the public health nurse so if you recall um i believe it was probably the end of august they decided to hire their own public health nurse and and uh not mm-hmm. go with the city of northampton um mm-hmm. But still, we're only talking October, November, December. We're only talking really three months. Um, and, and quite honestly, there's only there's only so much they can do. Um, but the cases are low, and that's that's a good thing um, that there's not a lot for them to do. Um, no, the the library purchased some filters for their HVAC. Is, is that already been paid for somewhere, or is that yes? Okay. So I'm going to ask again, being a betting man, yep. risk analysis, what's your, what's your educated estimate on how much of the 57.6 will come down through FEMA and how much of the public health need 10 will come down because Foothills has access to other funding sources? I think public health needs will be minimal. So three um, for the elementary school, you're 
I suspect, um, I mean, looking at the list, you know, 30,000 of that, roughly 30,000 of that is computers, which is not FEMA eligible. Um, so you're going to maybe shave off 10,000 off that? 10 off the 57? Yeah. So you're down to 40. So, so, so expenses from this spreadsheet will show 47 ish at the end of the day. It wouldn't, it, yeah, it would increase that estimated amount available remaining. By $10,000. Say, say we knock off 10 from the elementary school and then 10 from public health needs. And so, so and 20. That would allow us to fund, and I think Joyce's idea is a very good one. Um, you know, the schools are going to be remote for a while, or at the very least, hybrid. And if I were a parent and I lived not near a Comcast line where I could get high speed internet, I'd, I'd, I'd be pretty ticked off. And if we can help solve that problem, we should do that. I mean, unless someone has a, you know, well, I won't get flippant. Well, I, I, I think that's the big good use of the, of the money, but I, I guess I'd like to make sure we're, we're treating everybody in town Equally, if, if we're going to expand Comcast and not just focus on kids, even though kids are, should be the primary, but I guess take a look at the entire town and see where we're short on Comcast service and see what that is. Uh, if we need to prioritize some of it because we don't have enough, well, then maybe look towards the, towards the uh, education, the kids portion where kids are, but I, I think... Uh, I like to see some information on the whole town, and um, maybe Joyce talked some about it last time and showed a map. I think uh, yeah. I don't know how extensive that is, or if there's more or less. Yeah, I think it's a um, it's a doable problem to find out where else in town there is no internet, and it I believe it will be a small number. There are certain places to look. As you can see, the strand map covered almost everything. Um, and basically, you look at the end of the strands. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically take some groundwork, some making phone calls to people who live there and finding out. Um, uh, it might be that uh, the folks at the school know who in town does not have internet and has children in the schools. That's another possible source of information if they're willing to share that. Um, but I, it, I, I would expect that there might be some another house or two that doesn't have internet. And, um, but I, it could be that there's zero. I'd, I'd equally believe that. Um, but I think uh, I was thinking the same thing that Fred was thinking that um, uh, we know about the problem at North Street because the people there have been very vocal about it. Um, well, vocal meaning they emailed me, they've emailed uh, Brian, they've emailed other people. Um, we don't know about people who haven't heard right? <laughs> or people who haven't been in touch. So I think you're absolutely right, but we do know where to look for them. And it's a pretty doable problem because it's not, does not involve contacting, you know, 1500 people. It involves contacting a much smaller number. Okay. And so if we were to do that, who would, who would do that? I don't know what resources we have at the town office in terms of people to do that, but that way they've got the information, right? We've got the, uh, the, the, the maps that I have up in my other window, just thinking of you, Fred, I put up the, uh, the, uh, the assessor's maps. Um, and basically looking at that and crossing with you, are there actually uh, dwellings there? We know how far the line goes, contact the people who live there, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I don't have contact information for everybody in the town, but it sounds like it would, it would be a few hours on somebody's desk or like a, you know, a couple hours a day for a couple of, I don't know how long it would take. Um, but that, 
I, it seems like someone in the town office may be able to assemble the information needed. Um, at one point, I had some time to help out with that, but at this point, I probably my help would be minimal. <laughs> um, although I would love to be able to, I, I would certainly be be willing to help whatever I can. On you, that, you serve as a foreman. A whip cracker. Yeah, no, more of a <laughs> more of a guide. A guide. Yeah, I would be happy to to help guide if that is uh, something that would. That would help, especially. You know, I've got the map. I think I've emailed it to Brian, yep. um, but it really ju it just means taking a look at that map. And we know I, I wrote in some of the extensions on my own uh, that I know about, um, but it just kind of somebody who knows the town knows who lives where. I think that uh, that knowledge is is in the various people who work at Fort Sandy Lane. So I think the knowledge is there. It, it, there's so many other things going on. I don't have a realistic idea, and Brian may have a more realistic idea. You know, when could he carve out um, a few hours for, I don't know, employee X and Y to look at this? I don't know. Would, would this, if we went this route and identified where and got a dollar amount that we would need, could this be implemented by the end of the year? Is that possible? Uh, question. Don't know. If we had funds, I think that would help. Um, I know Comcast has a long lead time. It's possible that it would not be that it would not get done by the thirty first. But we, they, you know, I, I think we can ask and we can see if they'll try harder on this because we say we'll pay you if you do it by the thirty first, and we won't pay you if it's after that. Uh, another possibility, just thinking back to what Fred said about other parts of town. If we've got other parts of town that need internet that don't have it and uh, don't have students, that we could let those be a lower priority, but uh, look for like a second round of funding of something like the CARES Act. Uh, of course, that'll depend on what uh, Congress does, but um, it, I, I think having the information ready means, oh, we have the information, so when a, a funding opportunity comes up, we can jump on it. So I think it will be good to do, even if we can't afford to do every part of town in this first CARES Act funding. So if, if we're to act on, on Brian's list here, either this evening or, or soon, I guess we should have a, an item in there, a line item and a dollar amount for extending Comcast just to to get it in the system? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I mean, we're, we're, I don't know. I, we probably should do it as much as we can when we uh, initially to use the money rather than later on. Right. I wonder, Brian, what do you need from us t tonight as far as a go ahead on? on spending these. I imagine for the schools, they want to go ahead soon so they can get this all done by the 31st. Um, and honestly, for everybody else, <laughs> the, the, the go ahead, um, are some of these more critical than others? Well, I'll speak, I'll speak on behalf of the tent. Yeah. I would like to get the tent ordered tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's weather dependent and, and let's just do that. Okay, so I get George, you're asking Brian, what what do you what do you want us to do? You want us to tell you go ahead? What what are you looking for? Um yeah, yeah, for some of these it would be good to um to get the go ahead on. I, I would agree that the if we're gonna do the tent for the for the senior center, I think that's that's something that we'd be looking to get soon. Um uh, uh, the 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 tap the tents at the elementary school have already been purchased, so that that we've already talked about that. Mm -hmm. And I think the schools are looking to get orders in. Um, I, I know for for some of this stuff, the the turnaround is not quick. Um, and it, mm -hmm. you know, going through the the list that were that they provided, um, a lot of it's, you know, for the for the elementary school, it's 
it's Chromebooks that we already talked about. Um, and then a lot of it, it's a lot of it's, you know, cleaning and, um, PPE stuff. Um, and that's sort of, sort of in the wheelhouse of what I think the CARES Act was, was, was intended to be. Uh, in my mind, I separate the elementary school from, from Frontier. Um, Frontier stands in a, it, Frontier's in a, in a little different boat because we would actually be subgranting the money to Frontier um, because it's not, it's not part of the town. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that, that we could get reimbursed from FEMA for that. Uh, and again, I, I don't know if it matters to the board if Whitley pays its share and other towns don't, you know, don't pay. Does, does, do we, do we, does it matter? I guess. Um, Not to me, it doesn't. We, we should do our part. We should do what's right. And we can't worry about what other towns are doing. Yeah. That's my. Right. Yeah. I, I, I kind of have the same sentiment as, as John there, um, especially since our, Chair is relatively small there. It looks um, compared to what they're going to have uh, done. So I just grabbed a pen to annotate here. So it sounds like we've already discussed this one uh, and approved that. The this is one that John would like us to do. It sounded like the ventilation upgrades here were things you actually have a pretty good idea of cost. Yeah. Um, uh, this one, you don't necessarily have a good idea of the cost. These are kind of placeholders and there's an idea that this public health needs because of the Foothills grant might be substantially lower. So I, I guess I would feel um, a little funny uh, approving those without- Yeah, I, I don't think those would be more. approved. Um, and following what John just said, um, letting Frontier know they can order stuff. I think that's worth it myself. Um, uh, upgrades to the HVAC, I, I assume that's putting on filters. Uh, um, for their that's the, yeah, the, the ultraviolet, there's the ultraviolet. Yeah, oh, okay. With all the um, air handlers. Then that seems like a no brainer. And this might really be a lower number later and I would be, would be trusting their diligence and yours Yep. to see if that can be a lower number. But I guess this is kind of where I draw the line <laughs> that I'm willing to say, hey, let's do those. Let's tell people to move forward on those so that they can get done. Yeah. Um, uh, it might be we need to find a little more information from Comcast before I'm really willing to commit funds, but we're gonna meet again in two weeks. So um, we can research the timeline, we can look into possible other funding and maybe have a, a stronger argument to make for spending some of this on um, uh, cable extensions um, at our next meeting. Does that seem like a reasonable way to proceed? I, I, had a, I have a couple points, Joyce. I, I, think, I think you're, you're pretty close to being spot on. Um, I, I want to, I'm, I'm assuming the 5768 for the elementary mm -hmm. school is, is that a, a, an immediate request or is that a request? I mean, does it go in and then FEMA pulls from that what it's comfortable? How, how does that work? Um, so with the elementary school, we would be we would receive the invoices directly, um, and we would pay out of our our COVID uh, emergency account, and then we would submit for reimbursement. Um, we would submit for reimbursement from the CARES Act, and we would submit for reimbursement from FEMA. Uh, so, and, and so, so the fifty seven eight goes out, and then we get something back. Is that how it works? Um. Yes. Yeah, and, and there's going to, at the end of the, the CARES Act period, there's going to be a reconciliation, there's going to be a time where we can reconcile, where we can say, hey, we thought FEMA was going to reimburse us for X, and they didn't. Um, 
So we want to use additional CARES money for that. Well, but that's all well and good, but but I, I struggle with how you plan appropriately with that with that extent of an unknown to say, okay, how much money do we have to extend our 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 our, our, our digital access for 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 people who don't have who don't have high speed internet right now? I, and, and especially because they've got to actually do the work and we have to be realizing a, a return on the investment before the end of the, of the calendar year. So I, I guess I, I'm not convinced that with the way the system is set up, the calendar is our friend here. If we want to, if we want to do this Comcast piece or the wiring piece, how do you do that? Well, that's something maybe we can try to find out I, in the next two weeks. Yeah, we, we, we may not be in a great position. I may have suggested something that would be really great to spend on, but for some reason it will not be possible. Right. Um, so I, we're just not in a good position to, to decide on that tonight. It could, If we knew the information in two or three days and we needed to hold an emergency meeting, then right. we, then we, we could do something sooner. Okay. But I think it might that might be an unreasonable timeline. It right. might be that in two weeks we're in a better place to decide and it may be that already time is not our friend, so. That's fine. The, the other thing that I would just like to request, and it's not, it doesn't hinge on the decision, but um, the number of laptops that are being purchased is not a small number. The, the, the ones that have been already purchased and the ones that are still to be purchased. And that's magnified by the number of purchases that are being made by the other three elementary schools and the high school. Um, I'm curious as to what the maintenance and uh, cleaning and, and wiping of these computers will be on an annual basis after the school year is over, um, because that's not a small task. And we have a very small IT department. And so I, I just want to make sure that when we spend this money, the computers have a long shelf life rather than just, oh, we have to replace them now. And, and, and I'm not saying that that would be the intent, but these are the kinds of things that <clears throat> are oftentimes sort of forgotten about. Um, the, the cleaning and the wiping of computers every year does extend their, 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 their lifespan. And I, I wanna make sure there's capacity in, in the district to, to do this well, or what the plan is. Um, because I, if there isn't a plan for a dramatically increased number of, of, of laptops, um, then, I, then I, I, I think we're, we're being foolish with, with the money and the opportunity that's been presented us. Okay, but Brian, didn't you say earlier that some of the 57,000 was already spent on computers? Uh, some, of, some of those, the original Chromebooks, um, yeah, were ordered, but they're back ordered. Right, so, and Fred, I, I, think, it's, I think we need them. I, and I think we should be giving Chromebooks to every kid in the school, CARES Act or no. I just wanna make yeah. sure that the maintenance, a maintenance plan so that these things last as long as they do, because, you know, if you watch an eight-year-old on a Chromebook, it's, it, they're not treating them with kid gloves. Yeah, I don't. It's an know. ironic term. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's right. Huh? <laughs> the buying of I just wondered uh, of the fifty-seven thousand, how much has already been say committed for for computers that have already been ordered? Um, yeah, ordered just over nineteen thousand. I I just closed this the spreadsheet. Okay, so you can really, you can, I guess, subtract that from the 57 to say that's, you have, uh, what, 38,000 left. Yeah, um, but we haven't paid the cost yet, so they're still, paid it right. okay. they're still out there. All right, okay. Yeah, I, I have no problem with with these uh, the Joyce identified here on this uh, spreadsheet to go ahead and uh, forward to purchase it and see what needs to be done to to purchase or buy or invoice or whatever. 
I'll make a motion to 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 um, give the go ahead to spend this money and have Brian create a strategy for purchases and and money outlay to to as as appropriate or as needed. For uh, I'll second. Okay, and we're this is just to the items checked here on this sheet. That's correct. Okay. Okay, we'll call the vote. Jonathan? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Fred? Yes. Okay. Like I mentioned before, once we hear back from FEMA on the first reimbursement request, we should have a much better idea as to what they're going to what they're going to consider eligible versus ineligible as it comes to the term emergency. Uh, so can you check okay. on timing on that, Brian, to the best of your ability? I know that's a tall order. Can we what? Check, check on the timing on that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Uh, next item is uh, discuss recommendations uh, related to Halloween activities. So I know you're going to say, you know, I know you're going to say, uh, what's the Board of Health say? Yeah. Um, so um, I had an email from Fran, and I just wanted to bring this up because you see it in the news a lot, and um, different communities are doing different things. Um, and um, so what I have from Fran is, um, it says, as to Halloween, following the CDC guidance is good advice. Avoid crowds, keep six feet apart, wear masks not just Halloween masks, I was gonna wash, say. sanitize hands and high touch items, plan safer celebrations as per the CDC website. Um, so that's that's what the Board of Health is thinking. Um, I just wanted to kind of get that out in the open um, and see if the board had anything you wanted to add or, or suggest differently. Um, I, and I can't, I, I can't remember in the past, there was something we had, we were talking about with Halloween. I think it was weather related, um, and um, you know, as a as a as a town event, Halloween's not really a, a, a town sponsored event. It's things that people do um, privately, and um, there's so we have recommendations from the Board of Health. We'll 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 push those out on the website, um, and hopefully we can get it out on the on the police department Facebook page. Um, as to what those recommendations are. But I just wanted to see if the board had anything else that it wanted to add or suggest. My, I, I think I think they're good recommendations. I, I think, did, did the mask uh, suggestion include people dispensing candy as opposed to receiving the candy? No, it just says wear masks. I think that should include everybody, whether you're getting or receiving. Get that long tube that you can send the candy down. <laughs> um, and and the other thing that I I wonder about and you know it, it's it's a great tradition and I see people do it and they have a good time, but the 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 sort of trick or treating by hayride that takes place, people need to be encouraged to do that socially distanced. So maybe there aren't as many kids on those hayrides this year as there have been in the past because sometimes those the, the flatbeds with the, they're pretty crowded and it's great it's wonderful people have a, an amazing time but you know in, in this year if we want to really try to try to, to try to slow this spread to the extent possible maybe the recommendation should be to to ensure that transportation beyond walking also be six feet apart it, i'm trying to be delicate but Well, not that we can right. control it, but we can recommend. What, what's what's the requirement today for for gatherings? Is it fifty people? Um, outdoor gatherings. Outdoor gatherings. Um, I believe that's right. But there's still suggesting. I have to double check. They're still suggesting six foot distancing, regardless of, of, of crowd size. Right, but 
I'm saying maybe it's 25. I, I, I don't know if, if it's whether that's something to remind people to keep less than 50 if you're having an event. Yeah, all the, all those definitely the, the, the gathering sizes are still apply to, to private events. Right. I mean, there's there's venues in town that, that could have a private event and exceed that number. But no. it's a private event. I don't think we have any authority over that, do we? Well, the, what is the, the Board of Health does. Yeah. Inside somebody's home? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I just think it's it's a it's a, a, a re you know, just drive the point home. I'm I'm missing my words, I guess. Drive the point home that that regardless of and it's gonna continue into the holiday season for, for you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas events that you gotta keep the, the 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 governor's orders and the local board of health's uh orders in mind when you have holiday gatherings be it halloween or whatever not it fun. 50, it's 50 per 50 persons gathering in the single outdoor space what about outside i mean inside um it's eight persons per thousand square feet um, with a max of 25 persons in a single enclosed indoor space. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll put together something to put, um, um, some guidance to put out from uh, jointly, from, I guess, is it okay if it comes out jointly from the Board of Health and Select Board? Sure. Or do you want to be left off? No. <laughs> no. I'm good with that. All right. Okay, moving on the agenda. Uh, next is a old business item. Uh, discuss uh, grant application for the community compact ITE grant program. Yeah. Um, so as Joyce was uh, Joyce alluded to earlier, um, it turns out that that the IT grant program won't. It wouldn't be an eligible activity to extend the um, the copper cable that's that's owned by Comcast. Um, so I, I guess they're they're either differentiating by technology or ownership or both. Because um, if we go back and look at other awards that they've made, they've they've awarded um, expansion of municipal fiber networks. Um, so I, I think that's one of those two are the differentiating factors. Um, I'd still, I still recommend that we, that we submit something. Um, and I, I think the, the easiest thing at this point in, in a beneficial thing would be to, would be to submit an application for um, the public safety radio upgrades. I know Sunderland mm -hmm. is submitting for the exact same thing and they've actually already submitted for that. Um, and that would be in the, the ballpark of um, the radios were, were, f the, um, the whole amount was around 45,000. Um, but I think it would also be good to add in, well, that would make it possibly an additional 50,000. Um, and that 50,000 would be for, uh, repeaters. So there's concerns with uh, with the technology that in some of our larger um, larger industrial buildings that the radios wouldn't reach inside. Um, I heard that from from both uh, Chief Savine and, and J.P. Kennedy. Um, so these would be vehicle these would be repeaters that would be installed in vehicles and it would relay um, the signal from the tower to the repeater and then to the to the officers who were inside a building. Um, so I guess that would be, I guess that would be a, a proposal for the for the board to consider. Um, I'm not sure at this point what else um, 
we could do. It's a cost that we know we have to incur. At least the at least the forty five thousand is a cost that we know we have to incur. Um, anyways, so yeah. It sounds like a reasonable way to proceed since we can't do the the cable extension. It's certainly more money than the cable extension would have cost, at least the, the one we know of in, at the end of North Street. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Brian, one time we talked about buying a portable, I guess, monitor or computer screen that we could use for what, outdoor meetings or, or even into bigger uh, rooms, town hall, or, or whatever. What what happened with that request? Um, I don't, what do you mean? I don't guess I don't know what you, do you mean, like a smart TV? Right. Something that was portable that we could use in different locations. Uh, you wanted a, I don't know, I, I, I guess a, a remote meeting indoors or, or outdoors and have a computer screen there for people to look at something i guess i i guess i don't recall i don't remember got the, this either got the computer screen at the at the town hall uh that room on and on the first floor uh, yeah something like like that or, or even like that that would be mounted on a our conference room or, or even for use upstairs in the town hall for bigger events. I think, I think it's a good idea. It's, I mean, obviously big meetings use it all the time. They use right. those types of screens all the time. Yeah. I mean, the other option is a projection screen, I guess. Uh, but if you wanted a computer access or Or upgrade what we have in our conference our conference room now in the, in the town office building. Do we need to do any upgrades there to the projection system? Um, I, I mean, there's there's always new technology we could we could install there. Yeah. Um. So I I mean I I think for for the purposes of this grant, uh, they ask for a a single project. Um. Okay. And the, the maximum the maximum amount of the grant is two hundred thousand, um, but I think if if we could get ninety five thousand from from this grant, I think that would probably be a good way to go. Um, and it and it and it defrays costs. I mean, let, let's it, right. it's budget relief, which is important, obviously, in these times, Fred, because I think we're all pretty aware that the next budget season could be a, a pretty challenging one. So if we can if we can if we can have budget relief, uh, we should take advantage of that. Okay. Right. This would replace the, if it were funded, it would replace the the twenty thousand or twenty five thousand that we previously appropriated at the annual town meeting. That would go back to free cash. Okay. So, do you need a motion, Brian? Yeah, I, I, that would be good. Um, Joyce, why don't you do the motion? <laughs> uh, I I move that. Um we uh, apply to for the IT grant for the police radios. Second. Okay, roll call vote, Jonathan? Yep. Joyce? Aye. Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay, moving on, new business uh, to sign the election warrant for the November 3rd, 2020 election. Joyce, you got your pen. Can you sign it? Uh, I've got my pen tablet. <laughs> um, yes, I, I could actually uh, sign it on the, if you do a share screen, but I don't know that that gets saved. Yeah, I don't think that's, uh, I don't know how the, mm. I don't know how the courts would, would, would find that. Right. So here's, so here's a warrant. Is there an election? Um, yeah, you could, oh, okay. couldn't tell. I must so, have <laughs> so we have the the offices and then we have the uh, I think there's two questions just kidding three four more questions yeah I only see lawn signs for one and two so um yeah well the other two are advisory so they're, they're not as contested gotcha so um 
if this looks good, we'll have we'll have the board come in and sign it. Yeah. Okay, it looks fine to me. Okay. Yeah. So, if we want to go uh, to the next item. Um, okay, licensing so, fees. For yeah, so it's October, so this is when we talk about licensing fees so we can send out notices and get everything because it's done on the calendar here. Um, these are the fees. This is, Amy put this uh, table together. Um, these are the fees in Waitley, Williamsburg, Hatfield, Sunderland. Um, in Deerfield as well, although, uh, although I think we learned Sunderland is taken off. I think what is it, thirty percent? Yeah, yeah. And the one-time thing. Yeah. But are they taking it ac across the board, or are they taking it just for certain ones? Because I, I got to I, I have no data to support this, but my <laughs> guess is that, um, and actually, anecdotally, I know that retail package stores are doing as well, if not better. Uh, with all the 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 home, the the the, the home remedies for COVID, uh, you know, getting through the day, um, you know, obviously your your restaurants are struggling, um, but you know the package stores are doing pretty well from what everything I'm told. So what, what I believe they did was they reduced um, by 30% for on-site alcohol license, on-site wine and malt, and associated common victual licenses. Yeah. And then it says, uh, for businesses that derive their sole income from alcohol, which are closed under the state's COVID-19 orders, license fees are reduced by the same percentage for the first 30%. Of the year and prorated after that, well, I think. Well, I mean, we have we don't, we have one establishment like that. Well, yeah, we just have one, I think. And I don't, I don't. What's that? Right, go ahead, yes, yeah, one seasonal, yeah. I, I I don't see why we would until they reopen. I don't see why we would charge a license fee, honestly. I mean, they're not open. Well, and is everybody else on our list open? Let's see. I believe so. Well, Castaways is not. Well, that's what I'm, that was the one I was pointing to. Quan Quan's open. Well. Right, November. this is for next year. Till November, yeah, okay. It seems kind of complicated to do something where you carve it out for one particular business. So maybe we should just kind of leave it as is. And I know we've got until, I mean, someone could come and appeal in the next eight to 10 weeks, I suppose. I know when, um, when Quan Quan, you know, wanted to do the prorated thing, they just, they came to us, we listened to them. We sorted out something that would work. I think that approach might do well here. You know, but the 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 restaurant establishment, you know, and it, and it's, you know, there aren't many of them, so I don't think we're telling any secrets out of school. Clearly, the Waitley Inn has taken a hit on their business. They're not doing the business they were be straight strictly because of COVID, and to not reduce that type of an establishment by some percentage. I, I think is kind of unfair. Um, and I actually do think that if, it, if something is not open because they've been banned to be open, I don't, I don't see how we can charge them a, a, license, a license fee when they're not able to utilize that license. I, I, I think that's too much for us to do tonight. You know, maybe we should think about that, but I just, uh, I don't think a wholesale, oh, well, we're not going to charge you a licensing fee. They're, they're going to need to renew their license. At some point. we got to charge them something. I think if they let it lapse, that's a problem, right? And, and we're, okay, 
we're looking at, at next year. I, I, I guess if they have a, an issue with, with the fee we're charging, I guess they should come to the board and ask us to reconsider. And, and I would have no problem if you know someone came and made the argument yeah. uh, uh, that we should they should be we should be treated the way the uh, Sunderland was treating a particular similar business. I, I would listen to that. But I first of all, I don't understand enough about what Sunderland did to apply that here in a rational way. Um, and I just, just sort of I sort of feel like I only learned this today. Boy, it seems like a lot to try to decide with not a lot of deliberation. Um, but I'm not I'm not against some relief on the fees, but I just think I, I don't want to make a blanket decision now. I don't think I have enough information. So in the absence of information, I would keep it here, um, and then if we have visitors at later meetings, we can talk about it. I, I'm much much more comfortable with that. Well, I, I didn't even know that Sunderland had made that decision. So th I was thinking about this long before that. I, I, I don't, you, you know, what other towns do, it's a great guide, perhaps. But I, even if the Sunderland hadn't done it, I'd still be saying, I, I don't, I, I'm I'm not comfortable charging, you know, the weight lean's the only one. I, I'm not, they've taken a hit. And. But then, then let's, then let's talk about that in a rational way and not just. Sunderland did this, and we should do something without having a lot of thought given to it. Well, I, 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 I understand I, you've given a lot of thought, but you haven't made a presentation here to say, well, what should it be? Because they have been open with tents out in the front, and I know they were closed for, you know, three months or whatever. So, but let, let's have that as a more kind of more thoughtful discussion, I guess, is a better way for me to say that. And I was just tabling this. The decision yeah. is, is to, do we agree with these fees for, for these types of uses for next, for next calendar year? Either yes or no. And, and if we have a fee, then we can talk about reducing it for certain businesses later on. But I think we need to start somewhere. I certainly wouldn't raise them. No. no. I, I can tell you, Fred, that I am, I am not comfortable with these fees on October 14th, 2020. Okay, but these apply for next year. It, I understand that, but do you think that any of these are gonna be opening up with 100% with capacity on January 1st, 2021? I don't. I don't, I don't know, we, we can't forecast that that far ahead. We have no idea. It's only two months. I know, and things could change in two months, we don't know. No, well, I, I you know, I, I'm not ready to put a new number on these, John. I'm not ready to go through the entire list and in a rational way say which ones ought to be changed to a lower number. And um, if you have any such proposal that seems fair and rational, then I'd love to hear it. But you haven't brought something here that says we should reduce it by this amount for this reason for this particular license category. Um, I don't think we should necessarily pick out individual businesses, right? But you know, we do have businesses that can kind of be clumped together. You know, the you know, kind of the restaurant bars versus the, you know, the, uh, the retail and so on. And I, I think it's not unreasonable to, to Stick with this, and but have it be um, that you know uh, uh, for the moment stick with this, and then if we come up with a better uh, rational way to, I mean, I, I don't think our license fees are based on how well a business is doing, right? And I think we do we should respond, right? But uh, I don't, I think if we go through the license fees and say, well, this kind of business is thriving, this kind of business isn't, we have to apply something you know, uniformly uh, across different business classes. I think we can't just take one individual. Right. Well, I agree with that. But there, the, the reality is there's only, you know, one business, one business per class. That's, that, you know. That's not that's true. Specific. But the, Brian, do we need to, do these 
fees require a proactive vote or if we take no action, do these fees just stand? Um, we usually vote to set these every year, so. I, I understand that, but if we didn't vote to set these, would they go away or would they stand? I'd have to research that um, because you would have not set fees for uh, calendar year 2021. So I don't know that they automatically, I don't know without researching it, whether they automatically roll over to the next fiscal year or not. And I mean, the, the challenge here is that, is that, well, not the challenge, but I mean, we usually send out renewal. We send out renewal notices. We try to do it. Um, Amy would probably know better than I, but we try to do it, you know, sometime October, November, because um, people need to get their stuff in, especially to the ABCC um, yeah. by a certain date. I don't remember. I don't recall exactly what the deadline is, but and there is there is somewhat processing or what application fee or whatever you want to call it for. For, for some of these and and I, I guess because some some businesses maybe weren't open all this year or, or limited but I, I guess I, I'm seeing businesses uh, uh, services charging extra to make up the difference or to make up for their PPE or to, to just charge more for the, for the same item that uh, they were selling years ago and, and to just say let's reduce the fees because they're struggling yeah it does make sense but but i think we don't know the whole picture of what any of these are doing how much are they struggling what are they doing different to make up and for us to reduce the fee why i i don't know yeah. i guess like joyce is saying what what's the rationale for doing it well, I, then I would suggest we table this for a little while. I, I, well, I actually, can I make a different, can I move that we keep the fees the same um, on, a, you know, on a provisional basis and then take people as they come? I mean, Fong Fong came to us to ask for the fee to be different for a seasonal license than a year-round license. You know, if there's, if someone can come and make a case and back up their proposal with uh, some was something we'll, we'll listen to them but let, we we need to get the bills out and maybe that will be the thing that makes the, the the people who are holding the licenses come back and say okay can we do something about this i i think we we, we can't stop action i think action needs to happen and if sending out the letters will start the action um then i think the folks who will be fielding calls at the town office will start our discussion here and they'll uh they'll know they'll know, you know, how to respond to people. So I would move that we keep the fees um, uh, without increasing for the calendar year 21. Okay, I'll second that motion. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, vote, uh, Jonathan? No. Joyce? Yes. Fred, yes. So, so just to be clear, if, if somebody asks us if the board will entertain, I guess what I'll characterize as a a, a, a hardship reduction or, or something, the board would be willing to entertain that. I would say, yeah, from listening to this discussion, yes. But I don't think we, we're, we should be in a position where we're asking a, a private company to completely open up their books because that's not... I, I, I don't believe anybody has asked for that. Well, but, uh, something I mean, rational. We were closed for three months out of 12. How about a 25% reduction? You know, wh wh whatever the, the, the basic idea. I mean, something that's more rational than Sunderland did 30% for some subset that I don't understand, right? I think I want, I just want a little bit more uh, discussion about it. Okay. On but, a particular, and, it, and if somebody's fine with the fee, they're fine with the fee. But, but, but Joyce, and that's fine. I mean, we took our vote, but I don't think it's fair to characterize my position as well as because Sunderland did it because I don't- oh, I, I'm not characterizing your position as that. So I'm sorry if that seemed like that's what I was doing. I was not characterizing it that way. 
They need to if you wanted to table it, Sunderland did the reductions. They, they need to come to the board and to tell us what yeah. what they want to do, uh, what their concern is, and, and what they want different from the fee, rather than us, I, I guess, arbitrarily selecting Trying something. to guess. Yeah. It's up to them to come to the board. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next item is proposal from uh, FERCOG to complete phase one of the open space and recreation plan update. Yeah, so so the, the plan here is that, it, you'll recall, is that um, at the last annual town meeting, $10,000 of CPA funds were, were um, appropriated to um, help with the update to the um, open space and recreation plan, which has now expired. I think it expired in 2019. Um, Jonathan's been working with some folks on the open space committee, um, and I think they're ready to get started. Um, our idea originally was that we're gonna use a small grant from the state, um, conservation assistance to small communities grant, but there's some really bad timing um, in terms of, of of their requirements. Um, so we actually are planning on applying for that this year, um, but it makes more sense to use that money on the tail end um, of the update because it needs to be, the work needs to be completed by, by uh, June 30th. So that would be phase two, but we don't have money for phase two right now. So this would just be doing the first half of the update to the open space recreation plan. And, and the whole nut is $20,000, correct, Brian? Yes. Um, you know, I, 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 it's, it's been appropriated at town meeting. Um, open space committee w was, was looking to do it. Um, the town will not be eligible for certain grants until we have an updated open space, uh, open space and recreation plan. So, you know, why wouldn't we do this? So I'll make a motion to, to, uh, Accept the proposal from Fergcock to complete phase one. I second it. Okay, roll call vote. Jonathan? Yeah. Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Okay, moving on to uh, town administrator updates. Brian? Yeah, um, some project updates. Williamsburg Road Bridge, The one of the two bridges has been set and is uh, in place. Um, so they're still working on, on getting the other bridge in. Um, it's gone pretty well. So it'll be, it'll be good to have that project wrapped up probably, you know, likely in the next month or so. Um, all that's remaining. I mean, there's some other wrap up work, but for the Chestnut Plain Road sidewalk project, um, Chestnut Plain has been paved. Um, and really the rest of that is the line painting that needs to happen. Um, and again, just some, some wrap up work. Uh, the other the other infrastructure project that was happening was Poplar Hill Road. Um, that's also been paved. Uh, the drainage is, has been put in, and there's just some um, some finished work that needs to be done along the on the road edges there. Um, so it'll be nice to have have those projects wrapped up. Um, in terms of grant submissions, um, I was worked with the library trustees, and we resubmitted the. Um, the library lift project for ADA municipal improvement grant. Uh, we decided to originally in our original request last year, we, we asked for the entire amount. And this time we're asking for half the amount um, as a strategy to hopefully um, get the money. The other half would be the 75,000 that we're asking for would, would replace the town money. If you recall, the, the, the plan was to do 75 from town funds and then 75 from the, from the uh, Robert Tudor fund. Um, so we'll hopefully hear, I think that the, we'll likely hear back in December for that. Okay. Um, in terms of future cemetery needs, the cemetery commissioners are exploring whether, whether it's possible to expand the East Waitley Cemetery um, and acquire some land um, from the property owner uh, to the south and East, I believe. I, I think it's it's currently owned by Full Bloom. Um, one of the one of the, the challenges will be that 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 land is currently in APR, 
um, so which is a, 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 a restriction that's in perpetuity for, for agriculture. And it would require votes, um, votes of the, of the state legislature to get a portion of that released. Um, Neil Abrams and I had a call with, with Natalie Blay this afternoon and, to try to see what the first steps would be for that. Um, so that's just something that that's, that's going on behind the scenes. Um, and the next step is, is Natalie's going to have a, a conversation with the department of agricultural resources to see if it's something they would even support because they have, they have discretion whether they want to release those or not, um, as well. Um, so the governor released, um, his revised budget today for FY21. Um, and in terms of what we're expecting for, for charges and assessments um, and local aid, um, the local aid, and this is compared to his original um, budget estimate, we're actually receiving $50,000 more um, in local aid. And much of, and really the, the two categories for that are, um, we must, be receiving more school choice students than originally anticipated in January. And we're also getting more money for uh, charter tuition reimbursement. Um, on the other side, well, actually just in terms of, in terms of aid, um, chapter 78 and uh, unrestricted general government aid, people that sometimes referred to as UGA, um, those are slightly lower than what they were uh, projected to be in January, but not by much. Um, in terms of charges and assessments, we're within about two grand of what um, what was originally projected in January. So all in all, for FY21, in terms of in terms of state aid and state charges, um, it's looking good. Um, I talked with Natalie Blay a little bit after the after our conversation in the cemetery, and um, there's concern that FY22 might might be might be worse than FY21. Um, depending on, on, on how revenue shakes out. The original projection was that we're gonna be down about $6 billion for FY21, and that's been revised down to about uh, uh, $3 billion uh, from their original projection in January. Um, so at, at least for the, for the short term, it, things look okay um, for us. Um, and really the last thing that I have here, current vacancies on, on boards, committees, and commissions, um, so for anybody who's listening, um, oh, and that's the other one I wanted to talk about. Um, but there's a uh, housing committee vacancy. There are multiple vacancies on the Council on Aging. Um, Joyce, if Nat is listening, there's a finance committee vacancy. I believe he's aware of that. That's appointed by the, the moderator. Um, we posted for the FRTA representative and we haven't heard anybody that's interested. Um, and then, <clears throat> Starting in uh, January, we'll have two vacancies in the Tritown Beach. Um, so I think our plan was to um, was to advertise these vacancies on the website and, and ask for people who are interested to um, to just be in touch. If that sounds like a plan, yeah, that sounds good. I sounds good. do that to let people know. Yep. What, what positions are open if they want to get involved? Yep. And then, um, so there's a, um, a vacancy on the water commissioners that, that we know about. Um, and that would be filled in the same process as, um, the school committee seat was filled. Um, so I, I propose that, that we put together a, a notice requesting people who are interested to, to send us, um, I don't know why they're, uh, I guess a letter of interest maybe as to why they're interested in doing it. Um, but it, again, it would be a joint vote of the water commissioners and the select board. Um, I mean, so there was a little, there was some concerns about the process as to how that happened. So if somebody were to submit a letter of interest, should we, I mean, do we want them to, to come to the meeting and, and talk or um, do we, Either way, know, a little something in writing in advance might be good. Like, but um, I wouldn't turn them away if they came to chat. Okay. I, I guess what we've been doing is 
not so much for the water department, but for others is, is the chair of the committee uh, making a, a recommendation, I guess, to the board to appoint somebody. And it's I like a, it's the chair. Who well, wants to decide um, that? Yeah, we're on ten minutes. Oh. So right. Thank you. Uh, and we, the other thing for some of the, the departments we have, uh, I mean, there were, that was for committees for departments. We have uh, each of us is a liaison for certain departments. I guess we should be involved in the decision. I know Jonathan has been for for some of the ones he has, and and. Uh, I guess we should continue that for for the others, for the other, the rest of us. Uh, and what whatever they uh, want to submit as a resume, I, I guess it's up to them. Enough to convince us that they're the right person for the position, and we're only looking to. Well, the the boards is a. Uh, I guess an uh, appointment that continues every year if we are, accept it and the departments is something that's only uh, until next election. Right? So, okay. So, it, it, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit unclear on the process. So, um, so we'll put out a notice and say, please submit a letter of interest, um, mm -hmm. All right. to us yeah. and we'll schedule the joint meeting with the water commissioners. We'll, we'll aim for the next, I guess we'll aim for the next select board meeting. If that works. That, did I understand that right? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. I think that's, that's all I have. Okay, before we leave, uh, we got future meetings. The next one is in, in two weeks, and then we have a conflict on November 11th is Veterans Day. Right. So for the end, do we want to move that to a different day? Or do we just want one in November, move it the following week? Is it, I guess, another option? Mm. Uh, we could do the day before, and, well, so it's the 10th, or if we did the 18th, the following week, the 18th, and then we won't meet, uh, I guess, Thanksgiving week, the 25th. I, I can pull up the calendar. I think that makes sense, because I, I, I didn't notice that that was the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to meet on the 25th, certainly. So do we want to move it to the 18th, then? One meeting in November. I, I think if we needed something in between, though, we could we can always yep. call in a uh, an emergency meeting for like the fourth or something. <laughs> if we have some something that can't wait till the eighteenth, does that? I mean, we're all pretty available, right, on the other days. So I think Fred's suggestion is a good one. Okay. And like, yeah, if we need to be for something else, uh, let us know. We can schedule Absolutely. it. Okay. Okay. Any other items to discuss before we adjourn? Um, I don't think so. If you can, in the next day or two, if you can get down to the town offices to uh, sign the election warrant for Lynn. I think that would be appreciated. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Jonathan? Yep. Joyce? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. We adjourned.